Dear students, now I have taken a problem based on resonance. An organ pipe open at one end is vibrating in first overtone and is in resonance with another pipe open at both the ends and vibrating in third harmonic. The ratio of the length of the two pipes is options A 1 is to 2, B 4 is to 1, C 8 is to 3 and D 3 is to 8. Dear students, first of all, let us understand what is resonance. Resonance is matching of frequencies. If I say that the frequency F1 is equal to F2, then there is resonance. Here, which are the two frequencies which are equal here? One of them is from closed pipe, the other is from open pipe. So, I can directly write that F1 is equal to F2. Let us understand what is this F1? It is from closed pipe because it is open at one end. It is a closed pipe. From closed pipe, I need to have an information about closed pipe. How are the frequencies? F1 is V by 4L. F2 is 3V by 4L. F3, 5V by 4L. So how are the harmonics? F1 is to F2 is to F3 is 1 is to 3 is to 5. They are V by 4L, 3V by 4L, 5V by 4, 4L, so on. Similarly, how is an open pipe? Open pipe is the one which is open at both the ends. How are the frequencies? They are V by 2L, 2V by 2L, 3V by 2L. All harmonics are present, both even and odd. So, from closed pipe, take first overtone. You need to know what is first overtone. F1, F2, F3, so on. Here F1 is fundamental frequency, whereas F2 is second harmonics, which can also be called as first overtone. So first overtone of closed pipe has got frequency V by 4L for fundamental frequency, 3V by 4L for first overtone. So you need to know this expression 3V by 4L. Now what about second frequency? It has to be taken from open pipe. Which harmonic should I consider? Another pipe open at both the ends and vibrating in third harmonic. You need to know what is third harmonic of open pipe. It is F1 is to F2 is to F3 is V by 2L is to 2V by 2L is to third one is 3V by 2L. That is what you have to consider. So third harmonic from open pipe is 3V by 2L. So 3V by 2L. Remember in both the cases V is speed of the wave which is set up inside the organ pipe but L are they equal it is mentioned that is what we are supposed to find out find the ratio of the lengths so you can't take those lengths to be equal let me take them as L1 and L2 so uh, 3V 3V gets cancelled since V is same for both the cases I want L1 by L2 L1 by L2 is 2 by 4 which is 1 by 2 so do you have an option 1 is to 2? Option A is the correct answer. Let's take up the next problem dear students. A bat flies at a steady speed of 4 meter per second emitting a sound of frequency 90 kilohertz. It is flying horizontally towards a vertical wall. The frequency of the reflected sound as detected by the bat will be. Here the data is velocity of sound in air is 330 meter per second and the options are 88.1 kilohertz, 87.1 kilohertz, 92.1 kilohertz and 89.1 kilohertz. Dear students, it's a very beautiful problem basically. It is based on Doppler effect obviously because here we are supposed to find out the frequency as observed by an observer. Here who is emitter? Emitter is bat and who is observer? Obviously observer is also the bat. The bat is flying towards a vertical wall and the sound note after getting reflected by the wall it comes back while coming back the same sound note is received by the bat. Here what, is, what are we supposed to find out? What is the frequency heard by this observer? 
and let us make use straight away of the formula for Doppler effect for the apparent frequency which is given by f dash is equal to f into v plus or minus v o divided by v plus or minus v s. We all know that this is the true frequency which is 90 kilohertz. v is speed of sound in air 330 meter per second. What is v o? Speed of the observer, speed of the source. Here what is source? Source is bat. What is its velocity? 4 meter per second. What is observer? Observer is also bad. What is this velocity? 4. So this problem is quite simple. If we just substitute f dash is equal to 90 into v is 330, 330 plus or minus 4 divided by 330 plus or minus 4. But what is challenge here? The challenge is to find the appropriate sign. We need to know the sign conventions properly in Doppler effect. What does it suggest? It says that if this is your source and if this is your observer, sound note travels from source to observer in this direction. So this is the direction of V. And let us assume that the source moves towards the observer. If Vs goes in this direction, Vs is velocity of source. Similarly, if observer also moves in the same direction, then we, according to our sign convention, if Vs and Vo are along these assigned directions, then in the formula take negative sign. So it will be 330 minus 4 by 330 minus 4. But in the given problem, I repeat, if both move in the same direction, then take negative in the formula. If they move in the opposite directions, what is opposite? opposite to the assigned directions, then take positive in the formula. Now look at the case. Here source is moving towards the wall, therefore it is along the assigned direction, therefore Vs should be negative. I hope it is understood, I repeat, source is moving along this. So let me say that this is uh, the wall. Source is moving in this direction, it is along the observed, uh, along the assigned direction, therefore Vs should be negative. So let me erase this positive sign. Next, what about uh, Vo? Who is observer here? Observer is bat, but observer is moving, moving towards the source. If this is observer, what is source for this bat? The wall acts as source, remember, wall acts as source and observer is moving towards the source observer is moving towards the source. Therefore, it is opposite to the assigned direction. Obviously, it has to be taken positive. So, let me retain positive sign in the numerator. The problem is finished. It is 330 plus 4 by 330 minus 4. Obviously, greater than 1. Obviously, greater than 1. So, 90 into greater than 1 must be 90 plus something. Do I have any other options? There is only one option which is 92.1 should be the correct answer because numerator is greater than denominator. Therefore, the answer, the correct frequency should be more than 90. Let me straight away write it as 92.1 kilohertz. C is the correct answer. Dear students, in this episode, let us have a look at one of the most beautiful chapters in your entire syllabus that is dual nature of radiation and matter. Before we go to questions, uh, let us uh, have a look at some of the concepts and formula. Ideally, the million dollar question was what is light made up of earlier? And many scientists, they explained uh, the nature of light in their own way. Few said that light is made up of waves and few others said that they are made up of particles. But in 1927, it was Louis de Broglie who gave a conclusion saying that light sometimes acts as waves and sometimes as particle in his uh, dual nature theory. And he connects the uh, material property with the wave property. That is, the material property is momentum or the mass quantity is related to the wave property or the wave nature, which is in terms of wavelength lambda. The relation is lambda is equal to h by p, where p is momentum, de Broglie wavelength 
lambda is further written as h by mv. Here, I hope you know that h is Planck's constant and uh, that momentum in denominator can also be written in terms of kinetic energy of the moving particle E. So, it is uh, h by root of 2mE. Further, if we are talking about any charged particle which is accelerated through a potential V, then it possesses a kinetic energy Q into V. So, the de Broglie equation gets converted into lam lambda is equal to h by root of 2m into qv. And if we are talking about electrons, which is the most happening uh, problems in almost all the competitive exams, they target electrons. So, let us be aware of this idea. Uh, you have to replace this q by e. So, we get lambda is equal to h by root of 2m ev. And we know that h, m, e are constant. So, uh, every time you need not substitute 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 for h and similarly 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 for m and 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb for e. So, after simplification, we obtain a form lambda is equal to root of 150 by v in angstrom units. Remember, this v is the potential through which you accelerate the charged particle. Here it is electron. And 150 under root V is 12.27. Uh, so, this also can be written. So, that is uh, lambda is equal to 12.27 by root V angstrom units. I suggest students to remember this expression. For electrons, de Broglie wavelength is given by lambda is equal to 12.27 divided by root V in angstrom units. Okay, for gas molecules at a temperature T Kelvin, uh, de Broglie wavelength is given by lambda is equal to h by root of 3m kt. Here k is Boltzmann constant. And uh, we also have a, a link between Bohr's frequency condition and uh, uh, de Broglie wavelength. They are connected by 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. This is a condition uh, for any electron which is revolving in nth orbit. Its circumference should be integral multiple of its de Broglie wavelength. Now, coming to photoelectric effect, you need to have an idea of uh, the expressions for work functions given by phi is equal to h nu naught, where nu naught is threshold frequency. Work function is also expressed in terms of threshold wavelength lambda naught. So, phi is equal to hc by lambda naught. Here, what consumes most of the times for uh, most of the students is the simplification in hc. So, students, I repeat and repeat and repeat many a times, don't write 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 into 3 into 10 power 8 for hc. I suggest you to remember these two values for hc. Students, you must remember the value of hc. I'll give you the value of hc in two different units. In standard SI unit, the value of hc is, see, 6.6 into 3, approximately very close to 20. So, it is 20 into 10 power minus 26 in units of joule into meter. But when it, what is most famous units used in this chapter and also in atoms chapter, we don't use joule, we use electron volt for energy unit and also uh, nanometer for wavelength unit. So, I suggest you to remember the value of uh, 1240, that is 1240 in electron volt nanometer. You should remember this value because this hc will always have a lambda in denominator. That lambda will be in nanometer. So, the advantage of remembering this value is the nanometer gets cancelled and you are left with 1240 in electron volt. So, all the energy units in photoelectric effect will be in electron volt. So, I repeat hc is 1240 electron volt nanometer. Now, uh, K max in photoelectric equation given by Einstein is E into Vs, where Vs is stopping potential. So, K max can be written as Evs. Next, go to Einstein's equation. It is K is equal to, where K is maximum kinetic energy. You can also write it as K max is equal to E minus phi, where phi is work function. E is incident energy. Incident energy can be written in terms of wavelength or frequency. So, the final expression for Einstein's equation reduces to the form Evs is equal to hc by lambda minus hc by lambda naught, where lambda naught is threshold frequency. hc can be taken common. It is 
h c into 1 by lambda minus 1 by lambda naught e v s is written in terms of frequency as e v s is equal to h nu minus h nu naught. So, students should be able to write the expressions for Einstein's equation in different forms and you have to pick the correct form for the correct problem. So, you will have to have that uh, uh, idea to write any expression when what you have to have the clear idea to write the correct expressions when needed while solving problem. Dear students, in photoelectric effect, graphs play a really very vital role. I hope uh, the graph of photo current versus intensity is very easy to understand like this and uh, the current versus the anode potential is also not too much confusing. But what is more informative is the graph of the maximum kinetic energy versus frequency. We all know that as frequency increases, the maximum kinetic energy increases, so does the stopping potential. Therefore, the graph of kinetic energy versus frequency and the stopping potential versus frequency look alike, but you can extract different ideas from those two graphs. Both the graphs as I have written on the board are straight lines having some x intercept also some y intercept uh, when the graph is uh, extrapolated further. But look at the k versus nu graph. If I take uh, the Einstein's equation which is k is equal to maximum kinetic energy is equal to incident energy minus work function, this can be written as k is equal to h nu minus phi. This is of the form y is equal to mx plus c. That is why the graph of k versus nu is a straight line. Here what is m? In place of y I have written k and in place of x I have written frequency. Therefore, in place of slope I have Planck's constant. This is also one of the possible questions. So, what is the slope of k versus nu graph? So, k versus frequency graph will have a frequency which is Planck's constant. And what is uh, phi here? Phi is work function that acts as y intercept. So, this is my second graph. Work function is phi that is uh, uh, the y intercept. And what is x intercept? Threshold frequency is x intercept. Looking at uh, stopping potential versus frequency, according to this relation, I have replaced k by e v s. I took this e to the right hand side, I got uh, h by e times frequency minus phi by e. So, in place of uh, slope, I have h by e and in place of y intercept, I have phi by e, which means slope of the graph stopping potential versus frequency is h by e, not h and the y intercept is phi by e. I hope you understood the difference between the slopes and y intercept in these two graphs and x intercept remains same in both the graphs. So, I hope students to have a to give more importance to, to these two graphs. So, with this information, let us take some of the problems and uh, other questions uh, from photoelectric effect and other concepts of dual nature of matter and radiation.